This is Twit. I'm going to have to drop into my package center. And uh, let's see if v yeah, VPN is running. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off. So I'm going to go ahead and say, stop. Uh, so I'm no longer running a VPN service. However, that port is still open. So there's nothing responding to the port, but I, there's still the rule, the firewall rule, that allows that port to come through. And is that enough for someone to detect? That is enough. As long as it's open, they can see that. That, ah, uh, that shouldn't be there. I see. So what I'm going to do, if we could go back, is I'm going to go into my firewall. And uh, in, in the Synology, my firewall is in network, center, uh, network settings, security, firewall. And we'll notice that this has enabled a system rule for TCP, UDP. Those are the two types of packets that can come mm -hmm. through my network. Um, from anywhere to anywhere, and it's going to, that's the, that's the VPN center port. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disable this. And what it should do is once it's restarted, it should have closed that port. So when I run another end map, the, that shouldn't show up. All right, so if you go to the other computer, Alex, I'm going to go ahead and do it again. I'm doing nmap 10.135.25.202. And we'll see if that, that port still shows up. 1723 TCP. So it was closed before. What we want to see is we want to see it not show up at all. If it shows up, it still means that that port is available even though the source, uh, the, uh, the service that's running behind it, is not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and remember, we're, we're just trying to mask everything. We're trying to make sure that anyone who's poking at my computer from uh, an IT terminal uh, won't see it. And there we go. See, oh, good. It's, it's gone. So no more port, but look what still shows up. MAC address mm -hmm. 00113268 and they know it's Synology. Yeah. Uh, I've just enumerated the router and this will work for pretty much any router and if they're, if they're paying attention, they'll know that shouldn't be there. So what mm -hmm. I want to do is I want to make this look not like a router, but make it look like a network card. So make it look like it's actually my computer connected to the network, not my router connected to the computer to the network and my computer's connected to my router. So this is where you where you dress your Synology up in camouflage. Yeah, a little lipstick, a little, yeah. maybe a little powder. <laughs> Anything to throw them off the scent. <laughs> Whatever so it takes. So when they come in, you can say, no, that's a laptop. Just put a screen on the top. And, it's a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're not going to do no. that. We're actually going to toy with one of the more advanced settings that you might have in your router. And by the way, this is found in pretty much any decent router from Asus, from Netgear, from TrendNet, from TP-Link, from Synology. Uh, and if you've got an older router that's running DDWRT or OpenWRT, it also has that. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and check it out. So if you go back to here, I'm going to quit out of everything so I can start from scratch. What I want to do is I want to play with the MAC address. I want to show you how I can change it to, to make my device seem like it's not this device. I'm going to go into my network center. I'm going to go into my uh, ISP settings under internet. There we go. And this right here, this is the MAC address that is, that's being reported. Uh, so right now it's 00113268 Anybody who's running something like Nmap or a tool like Nmap knows that that's a Synology device. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have it clone the device that it's currently connected to, which is 00E04C68071B. It's this generic USB adapter that's hanging off of uh, my laptop. So what it did was it just took the MAC address that's associated with this little USB adapter and it's put it into the table for this. So when it gets pinged, it's actually going to tell it that that's its MAC address. It's like a network plug as opposed to an actual Synology uh, device. Correct, correct. It wouldn't know the difference. But how, does that have the potential of throwing off how, how the network on, on the user's side of things is actually working? Well, yeah, slightly. And we'll, we'll explain the risk there. But first, let's, let's go and show it. If you go back to my other computer, so uh, oh, actually, it's gone down. There we go. Uh, oh, that, wait, that's right. Since I changed the MAC address, I've, it's, it's also changed the IP address. I'm now nmap. 10.135.25.123, because uh, since I changed the MAC address, mm -hmm. the router uh, that this is connected to thinks it's a different device, so it gave it a different a address. New, a new address. There we yeah. go. So let's go ahead and run this. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see it being enumerated as a Synology Incorporated device. Any other device right. would be happy. It'd be fine, because they'll, they'll look at that, they'll go, oh, it's just a, it's a Chinese chipset 
and uh, that's fine. It's, it's a network card connected mm -hmm. to a desktop or a USB dongle connected to a laptop. There we go. So let's, let's Those are pretty obviously very commonplace to, for someone to have. That's Precisely. Why okay and that. there we go. Look, see, it comes oh, up as a real tech, tech semiconductor, which nice. is that is a completely generic chipset. Now, this is what they would see. They would see there's no ports open, yeah. there are no services running, and the device connected to me is a real tech semiconductor, which is such a generic chipset, it's, it could be any laptop, any desktop. Wow, that's awesome. All right. and, and so if, if you've done this, you have more or less full functionality, except they won't know that it's a router and you're protected. Now, now I guess the bigger or thing you still have to pay attention to is where you store this in the room, so it isn't right. quite so visible that you've got this thing with antennas poking Precisely. out of it in the corner. So, so, so what keep I that did, in mind too. I, I actually put it inside of a mini ITX case. Uh, so it looks like it's just a desk. I even yeah. had the lights blink. Uh, so if they come in, it just looks like, oh, he's got a, he's got a computer, he's got a bunch of networking cables. That's yeah. actually not all that atypical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th but that's what I want to do. <laughs> now, there is a risk here. There is a risk, and here's the risk. Uh, you are taking the MAC address from another legitimate device. That somebody else could have? That someone else, well, I mean, I have it. So, because it right. cloned no, this, this adapter, okay, right? Okay. Which means that if I ever take this laptop, and let's say I'm going onto campus somewhere, and I plug it in, there's now two devices with the exact same MAC address that could give you away at, at, at worst. At best, you might actually have a collision where the router thinks, I'm, you already have an IP address, and it gives you both the same IP address, and now you're not getting connectivity. So maybe you want one of these that you just tape to the network cable in your room so you never remove it, but then you've got another one in your laptop bag that you bring with you that you use for that purpose. Precisely, precisely. Keep or, it there. If you wanted to be a really not so great person, if you go back, uh, this ISP setting, I can put any number here I want, any sequence. So if I wanted to be an absolute jerk, uh, and please don't do this, I'm just gonna explain how it's done, but don't do it. <laughs> I could scan the network, I could find the uh, adra uh, MAC address of a different adapter and put it into my router. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. don't do that. <laughs> that's just mean. That's really mean. <laughs> Really, I'm mean, seriously. That's it's annoying, especially since the other person will probably have no idea what you're doing. So, what what is the risk to the other person if you do that? Well, the other person suddenly things won't work properly. Like sometimes yeah. it will work, and sometimes it won't right, work. Right, right. Now, it also will affect you. So, right. And and by the way, if you're go, if you're calling attention to yourself that way, the IT administrator may track it down. And go well. I've got the single MAC address connected to two different ports. I better trace back where those ports go. And suddenly he's in your room and right. taking away your router. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You don't want that. So this is actually super, super simple. I, I could have explained all this in just a couple of minutes, but the reason why we went through this explanation is because this is good knowledge to have. Mm -hmm. When you're on a campus, you, you have to assume it's a hostile environment. You can't assume that everyone there is following the acceptable use policies for the network. You can't assume that everyone's going to be a good guy. Uh, so protect yourself. Get yourself, it doesn't have to be a Synology, it doesn't have to be an expensive router, but at least something that puts some bit of firewall, some bit of security between the bulk of your devices and the rest of the network. Made sense to me. Uh, usually this stuff totally confuses me completely, but uh, I think I'm following along. Next time I'm living in the dorm, I'll, I'll do this <laughs> myself. You know, you're going to have to have the talk with your daughters and say, honey, I know you're going to the dorm, but I want you to have this router. My, my father gave me this router. His father gave it to him, and it will protect you well. Practice safe synology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Dad joke.